Today's episode will commence with a grandiose display as we witness the second integrated flight of a super heavy booster with a Starship spacecraft. Despite the fact that the entire mission plan was not realized, it was a marked improvement from the first flight. Then, we will take a look at the concluding preparations of the Peregrine Lunar Lander, slated to embark on its lunar voyage later this year. To conclude this episode, we will recapitulate the Starlink 7-7 mission, which successfully deployed 22 communications satellites into orbit. On November 18th, at 1302 Universal Time, 33 Raptor rocket engines were ignited at Starbase, Texas. The tallest, heaviest, and most powerful rocket in human history lifted off for a second time. The full stack of Super Heavy Booster with Starship spacecraft first launched in April of this year. Yet that test flight was accompanied with several issues from the very beginning. For example, some of the Raptor engines shut down during flight and the launch vehicle eventually became unstable and lost control. In stark contrast, the current flight has gone incomparably better. It is worth noting, for instance, that not a single Raptor engine failed during the entire duration the Super Heavy booster was in operation. The flight was tranquil and stable. The unknown factor was the separation of the Starship from the Super Heavy. It was for the first time SpaceX had tested the newly implemented hot staging method. To maximize efficiency, the engines on Starship were ignited while some of the engines on Super Heavy were still operational. This marked the historically first hot staging of such a large rocket. <laughs> Following the hot staging, the Super Heavy executed a flipback maneuver and the following boostback burn should have propelled it closer to the coast. Nevertheless, the footage indicates that only some of the engines were operational. It is conjectured that the engines sucked fuel bubbles due to the rapidity of the maneuver. The autonomous self-destruct system detected this in time and ensured a safe destruction of the Super Heavy. Meanwhile, the Starship proceeded with its flight to a near-orbital trajectory. Its six Raptor engines operated impeccably throughout the whole flight as well. The objective was not to achieve orbit, but rather what is referred to as trans-atmospheric trajectory. This implies that the lowest point of the orbit was to be low enough within the atmosphere. The Starship was to fly around much of the Earth and re-enter the atmosphere near Hawaii. Several seconds after Approximately 30 seconds prior to the planned Starship's engines shut down, a few faint flashes were observed in the video stream before the telemetry ceased updating. SpaceX initially reported the loss of communication and subsequently declared that the Starship had been lost. It is yet to be determined whether it was an accident, the self-destruct system was activated, or the potential cause of its initiation. The full stack of Super Heavy Booster and Starship spacecraft did not fulfill all of its intended objectives on the second flight, yet the advancement over the first mission is undeniable. The acquired data will again help in optimizing further development. According to Elon Musk, the upgraded launch pad performed well. After the requisite inspections and minor repairs, it could be ready again in short order. You are looking at the Peregrine Lunar Lander constructed by Astrobotic. The spacecraft is currently housed in the Astrotech Clean Room in Florida, undergoing pre-launch preparations.
Recently, NASA officials took a symbolic step, affixing a sticker with the agency's logo to the lander as a sign of confirmation that the lander preparation for its mission goes according to plan. Weighing one and a quarter tons, the lunar lander has a payload capacity of 90 kilograms for its inaugural mission. NASA will load it with 14 science experiments and technology demonstrators, with the same number of payloads to be supplied by commercial entities. Peregrine Lander will be the payload for the inaugural flight of the Vulcan Launch Vehicle, currently slated for December 24th of this year. The spacecraft should touch down at the Groot Huysen Gamma site on the western edge of the Mare Imbrium. The most recent Starlink satellite launch occurred on November 20th. After a number of delays, Falcon 9 was able to launch from Vandenberg Space Force Base at 10.30 Universal Time. And liftoff of Falcon 9, go Starlink, go SpaceX. This time, 22 second generation Starlink mini satellites were sent into orbit. Let's mention some statistical highlights regarding the construction of the Starlink communications network. To date, 5,467 Starlink satellites of various generations have been deployed into orbit, with 368 having already re-entered the atmosphere. For SpaceX, this was the 287th launch overall and the 85th this year. The launch cadence of Falcon rockets is not only impressive, but their reliability is also remarkable. Since the last accident, they have achieved 254 successful launches, resulting in an impressive 99.3% success rate. For the Starlink 7-7 mission, SpaceX selected the first stage, for which this marked its 15th launch. Its landing site was the Of Course I Still Love You Autonomous Drone Ship. Thank you for your attention to today's episode of Spaceflight News. We are delighted in your interest in space news, and to ensure you do not miss future episodes, kindly consider subscribing to our channel. Additionally, you can find other interesting news on our profile on Social Network X, formerly known as Twitter. The link can be found in the video description.